friends, hope you're doing well. So yesterday I made a video uh, about the highlights of 2023, talking about good things that happened and like good stuff. And uh, I've left out books completely, but I love reading books. So uh, I read 32 books last year uh, and I just wanna highlight some of them, some of the highlights, some of the lowlights. So uh, let's just run through the titles. Um, maybe I should just sort by rating because um, I rate them. I, so my rating system is like you skip it, uh, which is the lowest. Like it's not worth reading. Like then those are sometimes books that I like quit. Uh, but those books that I quit aren't on here. Only books that I finished. Uh, so skip it is like the lowest. Uh, give it a chance is slightly above that, um, which is like it's good for. I could see how it would be good for some people, but it's not for me. Uh, read it is a book that I would recommend, and a must read is like if you only read one of my recommendations, it's a must read book. So we're gonna sort this if I can sort it on my phone. Um, how do I do that? Sort A to Z. Maybe I need to sort it by C to A. Okay. So the must read books. Uh, I got on the list The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. That one, oh boy, if you, that's a good one to start with. If you only read one of these books that I'm about to recommend, The War of Art, and oh, let me back up a couple steps. If you do anything creative at all whatsoever, you need to read The War of Art. It is, it's not very long and that each chapter is pretty short like i think the longest chapter is like four five pages maybe and maybe there's one that's like 10 but that's like a super outlier most of them are like one page so it's like you can you can get it and you can just easily digest it just a couple pages a night and it will change your life i, I promise you and I, I have not, i don't think i've given this book to anybody that does creative stuff and they didn't consider it like life-changing like the stuff that's in this book is, it, it, it's just like, it makes you feel seen. And you're like, this, I, this, oh, that, that, it's not just me that has trouble with this stuff. Like, and the way Stephen Pressfield like talks about it, A plus, can't, cannot recommend that book enough. Uh, the short version of it is he talks about what he calls resistance, which is like that voice inside your head that like tells you like, Oh, your work sucks like no one cares about this like why are you doing this like you know duh, 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 duh. But, and it, so it's like actionable and spiritual and just like how can we accept that and how can we overcome that and it's like oh it's so good um i wish i could go back in time and reread it for the first time again but i read this book like every year and i cannot recommend it enough moving on um the uh the next three are it's a trio of books all by the same guy um show your work uh steal like an artist and keep going which are um they're all very similar and they're kind of spiritually a trilogy and i think the the author austin cleon will tell you that as well um, i'll put links in the description for all these books too by the way uh, and there'll be affiliate links so click on them so i can get paid cashing out on this asmr let's go anyway <laughs> Um, I think I get like 10 cents if you buy the book from, from Amazon. <laughs> Neither here nor there. Don't support Amazon if you don't want to. I, I, I don't blame you. Uh, so the, uh, steal, steal like an artist, show your work, keep going. Um, these are three books by Austin Kleon. Again, very fast reads. There's a lot of pictures in these books because Austin Kleon is, he calls himself an artist who writes. And you can see that like the, there's a lot of his artwork is in the book. And I've even bought multiple copies of these books because I like the artwork and I've ripped it out of the book, which he recommends um, on his blog or in his email or something. He was like, you know, if you like them. Because I was like, hey, can I buy prints? And I think he's like, just buy another book and rip out the pages. It'd be way cheaper. And I'm like, genius. So I think I have some of them are even framed. Um, it's good stuff. I love it. Um, so Steal Like an Artist talks about... Um, how people just don't think they're creative, how they're not original, the stuff they're doing. And it's like, that's what everybody's doing is stealing. And here's how to steal and like how to steal correctly. 
Like you're not ripping someone off wholesale. You're stealing bits and pieces from all these different places. And that's what originality is because that's what original stuff is. If you just look and you're like, what inspired you? And it's like, here's five things. And then once you hear those five things, you can be like, that's how I can see how they got where they got. Um, then show your work is just a great book on how to, how to, um, I hate to say how to market yourself without seeming salesy and scummy, but that's kind of what it is. It's like how to talk about your work without being a douche about it, which is ooh, it's really good, and most people need that. Uh, then finally, Keep Going was a book that was written before the pandemic, but it's perfect for the pandemic era we're in, because it was released in 2020, and it was like just kismet timing, I think. Um, and it's just very much just like a book on how to deal with like creative burnout and just getting through the muck. Um, what else? Oh, Every Tool is a Hammer by Adam Savage. That book was probably my favorite new book that I read this year. I don't think it's a new book, but it's new to me. Um, and that book is just incredible. Oh, Adam Savage is so great. Um, he's got a great YouTube channel too, but, uh, it can get, a lot of the videos get really long, and so... I kind of wish there was shorter versions of some of those videos where it's like one day build, it's like an hour and a half long, and you're like, well, boy, I don't got that kind of time, man, or that kind of attention span. But his book is another book that I think every creative person should read. Um, there's so many good little bits in that. Um, can't recommend that one enough. What else did I get? Um... There's a book called Unfuck Yourself. Um, I don't forget who the author was. I didn't write the authors down on my spreadsheet, which I probably should have done. Um, but that book was was really good. It was one of the better self-improvement books that I've read. Um, I think it just, something about like the pragmatism of it, and it just kind of spoke very directly. Um, that was really good. What else was really good? Um, Outlive by Dr. Peter Tia. That wasn't a must read, but that was a very informative book on how to live uh, a longer, healthier life. Um, which, you know, I'm not going to judge you if you don't want to live a long life, but the, the, the key takeaway there is like part of what for most people what happens is you live a life and then it goes downhill very quickly. And so for people that live a long time the goal is how can you stay healthy for longer and the drop off you know like the longer it goes the faster the drop off is so if you have a longer life you tend to suffer less in the end it's kind of the TLDR there uh, but that book is scary because there's a lot of stuff in there you're just like because he is so the, the TLDR of that book is there's there's four horsemen that tend to kill people um it's like cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and neurological diseases, and um, what's the fourth one? Um, heart, heart, heart stuff, um, heart attacks, you know, whatnot. And so it's kind of just like, if you have diabetes, which I do, like, you're much more likely to get these out of three. And it's like, fuck. <laughs> so it's just like every chapter, it's like building on what we've just learned. It's like, shit, <laughs> like I'm fucked. So anyway, scary book, but uh, a lot of good information probably help me help me change some stuff um what are some other notable ones shop class as soul craft was a really good one um it was it was very long lines of kind of the war of art and uh every tool is a hammer um in that it's very much like building as meditation kind of stuff it got a little above itself so that's why I, that's just like a read it i would call it like the read it level it wasn't a must read um stolen focus was another really good one i read that one talks that one was really interesting because if you start reading that book the first chapter is very much just like okay boomer like whatever like kids should play outside and like that stuff but then it like he the author takes his phone and like throws it in a river like <laughs> like he has he gives his his smartphone and I think his email um, over to somebody else. And then he goes and lives in like a sea town for like three months. Um, and he's like, 
totally off the internet just to see like can I get my attention span back and it's like that's not what's causing it and then he goes on this massive journey where he like talks to all these researchers and there's like tons of good scientific data and interviews with all these people about like why are we as a society losing our attention span and it's not what you think it is it's not necessarily like cell phones like there's a lot more to it and so it's a fascinating book really good uh interesting read it was a little long though and some of the parts got like a little politically like that which is not you know like i here's how i feel about politics in a lot of stuff and a lot of media i feel like anymore is just like really heavy-handed and i kind of know where i'm at with politics so just having it just be like yeah like it feels very um echo chambery like i don't need billy joel armstrong to tell me that donald trump sucks to know that donald trump sucks like i don't need that um another good one uh was uh tough which is terry cruz memoir uh that book was it was terry cruz is just a fantastic storyteller um i would recommend that book that was a great one uh Tagabo Rides Again which that was my first Warhammer book uh it's real short I think it's like 130 pages but like it's got so many like orc isms and just so many like non sequiturs and it's just it's a lot of humor and if you are interested in sci-fi fantasy if you're interested in Warhammer stuff like Tagabo Rides Again I would say that's a great one to get you started um and then I only had two books that I would call skip it books, although I did quit one book. I, the book I quit was, um, fuck, what was it called? It was the Mr. Rogers book. I think it's that beautiful day in the neighborhood, maybe. Uh, but the first, like I started it, and the first chapter talks about he saw Mr. Rogers naked in a gym, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? So I was like, I can't listen to this like what is this and so i turn it off like they're meant by going to amazing places and if you've read it you can comment below but like that opening was so fucking weird from what i was expecting the book to be about that i was like ah, no i'm that's okay i've seen enough thanks bye um then i read a book called your art will save your life and that book was basically like if you're a liberal you're a political prisoner like this is the era of Donald Trump and it was very much it wasn't like when I say like oh I don't need Billy Joel to tell me Billy Joel Armstrong that is from Green Day to tell me you know Donald Trump sucks this book was just like victim mentality for the whole way through and I was like then it would stop being about that and like there'd be like a, a little nugget like of like this is going somewhere just kidding let me tell you about Donald Trump again you're like fuck I don't fucking care like the guy sucks I don't want to hear about him keep them, put them, take them in jail, or shut the fuck up, like, yeah, that's where I'm at at this point, to go, take, put them in the gulag, or shut the fuck up, I don't want to hear about him anymore, I'm sick of it, you know, and if that's like my privilege that I can say, I don't fucking care about this guy, um, that, I, you, the fuck, you got me coming, going, you got me going internet, there, here's my feeling about that, is, he is a monster that feeds off the attention and the only reason why his fans are as popular like his fan base is so rabid for him is because it pisses off these liberals and that's that's all they care about if you shut the fuck up about this doofus that is support wanes he'd be mad about something else and they'll hate that instead and then donald trump will fucking go away and maybe i'll go to jail that'd be great uh and then the last book that i would call it skip it it was called The Life of the Party, which is a Burt Kirchner book. And um, reading that book kind of solidified my feelings on Burt Kirchner is that, like, he's kind of an idiot. And after reading his book, it's like, it's just a guy who, like, if we're, if we're talking like D&D stats, like, maxed out his charisma stat and has just skirted by having more talented friends. And that's, like, it. And, um... Then you go back and you watch some of the podcasts with, like, him and Tom Segura, and you're like, you know what my favorite Do Bears One Cave podcasts are? Are the ones where Bert's not there at all. Like, Bert 
definitely makes it worse. And it's just, it speaks to the testament of how good Tom Segura is. That he is carrying Burt Kirshner. Like, I don't know how that man has a career. Like, and then I go, go watch a stand-up, and you're like, it's not really funny. They're just, like, stories that, like, some frat bro wants to tell you. And you're like, you're old and have kids. Like, some of these, I don't know. Anyway, it made me lose a lot of respect for him. I just, you know, I didn't know a lot about him going in. I'd seen some of his bits, and I was like... I like Tom Segura's book. I like that podcast. Like, let's go read this Burt Kirshner book and it just skip it. Um, or read it and maybe you'll have completely different feelings about Burt Kirshner afterwards. I don't know. Anyway, uh, those were some of the best or more poignant books I read in 2023. Um, what did you read? Did you read anything good? What should I read in 2024? I'm finishing my second book now. Um, which I'm on Libby called Night Dusk Dawn by Anne Lamont. This book sucks. Don't read it. Um, it's very much like, if, if I don't know if you ever get in those conversations with someone that like, doesn't let you get a word in, and you're just like, okay, I don't care anymore. Like, they're just rambling at you, like, there's my life. And you're like, okay, shut up. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like the, And then there's like a little, little nugget of like, anyway, this, the point of that story was this. And you're like, great. And I think more frustrating is, like, the chapter I just finished was, like, her talking about how she's, like, an old grandma liberal and, like, we're angry about climate control, too. But, like, I talked to my husband and I was like, we should get a Tesla. But you know what? It's like, we don't really need one and we love our cars and, you know, cars are kind of like freedom. And it's like, but, you know, we're, we're with you kids about being angry about climate control. And it's like, okay shut up just stop just stop talking and then just digging the whole worse and it's like yeah <sighs> ignoring the fact that cars like getting a tesla isn't gonna fix anything and it just i'm getting on political tangents again i don't want to talk about books I'm like fuck <laughs> gonna read more fiction this year that's what i'm gonna do i don't need any more politics in my media i there's enough of that get that shit the fuck away from me I already know how I'm going to vote. You already know how you're going to vote. Everybody's entrenched. We don't got to do the fucking politic thing this year. If you're undecided, holy fuck, what the fuck's wrong with you? Like, the world's on fire, and there's a group of people that are really bad at putting out fires, but they're trying, and then there's a group of people that are setting the fires. Like, who are you really going to vote for? Like, the people that aren't very efficient, but they're trying, or the people actively setting fires? That's it. Anyway, um, gah, ending on a bad note. Look at this orc. Does that make you happy? That makes me a little happier. Hello, little orc friend. I have, he, I've primed him black. Talking about Warhammer, like, calms me down. Okay, we focus on him. I've painted him black, but then I painted one. He's got, like, this little bullet on his little, uh, I painted that. I'll paint the rest of them soon. I like orcs. They're fun. <laughs> read the, the, read the Cabo rights again. And that gets you out of the political stuff. Anyway, uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're reading books. Books are awesome. Uh, and if you need... But okay, here's what you do. You go to your library. You get a library card. You download this app. The app is called Libby. It is free. You can check out audiobooks from your phone. You don't even have to like be on the library Wi-Fi. Like you could do it from anywhere. You just type in your library card and then it like sets up your account. And then you could just get, check out audiobooks and Kindle books on your phone for free. Like it's going through the library. So your library gets credit for the stats. So that way like when they do their like end of year report to the government, they're like, we checked out this many books. That way the government will be like, okay, we should still give you money. So even if, if you like books, if nothing else, download this app, check out books, even if you don't read them. Fuck it, it helps their stats, and it helps the libraries keep their budgets. This is a small thing you can do for the world. That is one good thing about this Anne Lamont book, is she talks about, like, and with a lot of it's misguided stuff, but, like, one good piece she had in there was talking about, like, you know, what, what are things you can do? Like, the world sucks and it's on fire and Donald Trump sucks ass and etc but it's like there's nothing stopping you from going out with a trash bag and some gloves and picking up trash and that's just like 
the tiniest thing you could do, but at least you're doing something. And that's kind of how I feel, and that's why I, sometimes I go out and pick up trash, because it feels good to be doing something as opposed to raising awareness, which doesn't do fucking shit for anybody. So, uh, enough with the awareness raising. Let's do something, even if it's not efficient, even if it's not the best thing, even if it's not going to make that big of a difference. If enough of us do it, maybe it starts to build, starts to add up. Who knows? Ripples make waves. God, this got way more political than I wanted it to. Politics are stupid. I fucking hate them. Anyway, a lot of bad words on this one. Oh, well. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you're doing well. And if not, go pick up some fucking trash, bitch. Somebody said me saying bitch is a good trigger for them in the ASMR trigger. Bitch. <laughs> so now I'm going to call everyone a bitch on the way out. Anyway, uh, have a good one.